There we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this five part series of lockdown lessons from the leaders. Uh, with this series, we're trying to understand what industry leaders did in order to survive and also succeed during this entire phase of COVID and lockdown. Today, I'm in conversation with Nikhil Jaisinghani, Director at Polycab India Limited. PIL is a leading electrics brand with over 88 billion rupee revenue. PIL is the largest manufacturer of wires and cables in India and a fast growing player in the MEG space. PIL has a strong pan-India distribution network with over 4,000 plus authorized dealers and 1,51,000 retail outlets. Nikhil here is backed by a management degree and MBA from Kellogg School of Management, Northwestern University, USA. His expertise lies in sales, marketing, and production. Nikhil is a dear friend and I'm really thrilled to start the series with him today. Hi, Nikhil. Welcome to this conversation. Hi, Ruchira. Thank you for the kind introduction and very happy to be the first one uh, and part of the series. I'm so okay. glad to start this with you. Um, so, Nikhil, I feel we are some of the few fortunate people who have had this experience. It's a one in, once in a lifetime experience. Um, and we are sort of the people who are shaping not only our own destiny, but that of our company and of our industry. So I'm going to jump right into this conversation. Um, how has COVID affected your business and your industry? Well, um, you know, so first let me uh, obviously state it's extremely unfortunate, right? I think this whole uh, going through uh, this entire pandemic and uh, the trouble that people have had to go through. So um, on, on that front, you know, we've been fairly uh, fortunate. And, uh, you know, because what COVID has done is uh, it's, it's uh, you know, changed a few industries and one of them is, is ours. So, for example, we've seen a very large increase in real estate demand. And, you know, with all the stamp duty and things like that. So governments took uh, action early. And that's really helped the industry, uh, pulled in demand. Uh, exports, you know, everybody has been talking about the China one uh, plus one policy. So we've seen some changes in exports. Uh, we're still waiting for the CapEx cycle to pick up, but it looks like that's underway. So, in, you know, in terms of the industry, things are looking much better. Okay. Uh, there should be a decent shift from unorganized players to organized players. So things look good. Um, on the business front, you know, we've been working on uh, figuring out how do we optimize costs. And by optimize costs, I don't just mean slashing wages or reducing uh, the number of people. You know, our, our, we, we truly believe that, uh, you know, we're, we're here to create employment and that's very crucial for the country. And so we don't just want to straight slash jobs and things like that, but we want to optimize costs and optimize in a way that, you know, there are the right resources, whether it's people, whether it's uh, machines, whether it's, um, you know, our, all the remaining expertise that we have, they're focused on the right areas. They're working on the optimal costs in terms of energy and things like that, right? So we've, we've worked on uh, such things. We've worked on getting uh, deeper reach into India. You know, we saw rural demand just uh, pick up and therefore, you know, it's, it's helped us go deeper into the country. And, uh, uh, you know, besides that, I think, you know, like all of us, uh, we've put a, a lot more thrust on going, trying to go more digital. Uh, you know, we've realized the importance of, uh, you know, having our digital systems up and uh, running. So I think tech is something that we've been, we've had a real focus on. We are considering, you know, or, or we're planning how do we become a tech driven organization. So, yeah, I think those are a few changes um, uh, that we see overall, even, even now, um, you know, the, the demand seems, seems robust. Uh, unfortunately, we'll go through a bit of a lull. Uh, I believe that this demand will pick up uh, right after. Okay, that's really interesting to know that you didn't really go straight for wage cuts and reducing jobs. And that's a very fresh perspective that, um, and actually I think it's going to stick with me that we are here to create employment and we must do whatever we can to optimize and help out. Um, so were there any challenges that you particularly faced in your company when this whole situation began and how did you guys face that? No, no, sure. I, obviously, everyone had challenges. We also had major challenges. We had uh, a lot of migrant labor leave by themselves. 
uh, we had a you know and and we still have a lot of supply issues you know with commodity prices and everything going over the roof uh, you know so I, I think that's that's been one of the major issues there's been a lot of volatility in in our raw materials we rely a lot on copper and aluminum uh, and uh, oil for our plastics and uh, you know those those prices have gone over the roof the availability has been an issue so i think those are our, the major challenges that we face obviously you know having covid cases within the company is something that uh, you know really disturbs us uh, and uh, you know we try we are trying to make sure that everyone's health is, is at its best but yeah i mean you know there are, there are some things that we can do uh, like vaccination drives we we had a vaccination drives at our factories uh, set up kiosks there made sure everyone uh, above 45 could get vaccinated uh, at our units itself and so there are things we are trying to do uh, but i think there's a lot more to to be done um, in fact uh, you know currently we're 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 mulling over pulling our sales guys off the field uh, because you know we want to make sure that uh, I, i think you know some things go a long way and and when it comes to the health and happiness of uh, employees you know we've got to think longer term rather than look at the shorter term sales so i think we we are just mulling we have a meeting on that today uh, on on pulling guys off the field and making sure that you know uh, they're safe and work from home and there's an alternative setup to making sales happen then if they are from home can they do the same kind of work well from from the phone um uh, we're trying to set up mini call centers within our company so there won't be you know professional call centers but we you know tried and set up a system where the mini call centers and and you know everyone has to call these many uh, people and make sure that material reaches and uh, you know it's it's amazing a lot a lot can happen over uh, uh, through telecommunication and digital so uh, yeah i think we'll we'll probably do that uh, we're just trying to make sure the systems ready and we pull guys off the field that's fabulous um so nikhil <clears throat> difficult times actually bring us to review sort of like ignored corners in our company things that we overlooked or we were casual about or complacent about uh what were some of the changes and solutions that you actually had to implement within your company and which was the toughest of them to take well like i said you know so we did we did look at uh, optimizing costs um and so you know in terms of let's say energy requirements how do you get in more solar get in more cleaner energy and things like that and it's 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 also cheaper uh, although there's some uh, capital expenditures required so we looked at optimizing costs in various places right uh you know besides that we made sure that as we did not cut any salaries we did not cut any uh, wages we we were very clear about that from day one uh you know we i think the tougher thing is what what covid also sort of supported has made people think beyond their comfort zones right uh, because everybody was in a particular comfort zone that this is aisa hi chalta hai you know this is how it work and i think that opened minds and we could we could sort of ingrain a lot of change we could ingrain a lot of uh, new thoughts and i think that while it was extremely challenging uh, there are people who adapt to it there are people who don't adapt to it so we probably took business decisions um, nothing related to covid in that terms, right so if there were leaders who were uh, aligning with the company or their performance was were aligning were aligned with the company you know we took those kind of calls where we had to plan uh, uh, leadership changes or we work on their development and things like that but we did not take difficult calls uh, of uh, reducing the number of people um, and things like that so i think you know that fortunately we've done the right thing we realized you know through this the importance of keeping a company financially healthy mm. uh you know in the past we've 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 had uh, uh, issues uh, about uh, 10 years ago and we realized the importance of making sure that the company is financially healthy and that for therefore in times like this you can support uh, you know the entire uh, uh, stakeholders you know the, all the stakeholders and make sure that you know you're thinking long term rather than taking short term decisions so Uh, we we also you know in fact we we made changes like we made our performance management system more employee friendly uh, we we want you know we we want to send out a message that we are here to share wealth uh, and you know so we we've, we've done that we actually look to further expand uh, you know so try to look at more the positive side and the developmental side of the of the long term of the organization and everyone around it so we've rather focused on that yes there are like you said you know there are tough decisions you have to make and in terms of performance in terms of 
uh, people sticking to the values in uh, of the company and if if that's not in line there's always going to be some change there's no question about that yeah so you brought up a very nice point to the forefront that the company is financially healthy and hence you were able to support the stakeholders in a time like this can you share some light on it for our viewers who can also maybe take home things that maybe they should plan for the future to come yeah absolutely i think uh, you know just to keep debt extremely low or or no debt uh, we we decided uh, over the years that we'll make sure the company's cash uh, uh, has sufficient cash and we don't have uh, significant debt and we are we are kind of uh, uh, debt free and i think that's that's extremely important because these kind of cycles whether this time is the pandemic or you know in future it could be some business cycles and they they come every few years and we've seen companies go belly up and uh, you know we don't want that to happen uh, you know there's a larger responsibility that we have to keep in mind and and that's the number of families you're feeding you're, you're supporting india has a population of 1.35 billion people employment's going to be our biggest challenge right and employment creates you know you'll have you have education you have you have their incomes you have everything related to it so uh, we we always have to keep that in mind and therefore it's important to make sure our businesses are good they're healthy we even gave messages to our dealers distributors that you know don't stop don't stop being hungry you know a lot of them have become very large with us but if they stop being hungry they can't expand and you know we'll have to expand with other people uh, as a company because we have to keep growing we have to keep feeding we have to keep on you know making sure that, uh, uh, the company is healthy and growing and uh, you know so don't stop being hungry you have to create employment you have to keep expanding you can't you know uh, get satisfied so i think that is, uh, is you know that that's a message i would i would always give uh, people Wow, I have goosebumps all over me. I'm like feeling so inspired. I feel like I can take over the world right now. And this is such a beautiful perspective actually while everybody thought of cost cuts in terms of letting go of people, cutting wages, sharing the responsibility in that sense. Uh to hear this message so fresh that no, this is not something we is an option and we will do everything else to get uh the value out of our people. optimize a cost i i am feeling truly inspired at this current moment <laughs> let me let me let me just add that we are no saints okay so what the company could in support last year was, was increments last year um but you know we made sure that if the company and we were very clear to the team that if the company did perform we will make make up for it and you know we uh, we're doing that right so yeah there are tough calls that you had to make i mean it's not that everything is was super hunky dory uh we were all in too much uncertainty but uh, we'll we'll try and make up for it there's no question about that definitely so um were there any decisions that you all took maybe in the moment of the panic or in the onset of this that you all do regret um well you know uh um not sure we have some uh, we've taken decisions that we really regret uh but at times we do feel we could probably be more safe so that people were safer and this you know all this happens a lot more on the shop floor it's extremely difficult to manage things in the factory it's it's way easier for us sitting at home and working right sure. uh, but there to keep the operations running so you know it's 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 tough so maybe we could have done something better there um uh, also you know there were uh, there was labor that that went back so obviously you know we we were quite clear that we we said we'll announce uh and uh, pay wages to labor who were there who were part of the company roster and who were willing to come along with our uh, you know making sure that our our health and safety guide- guidelines were followed uh don't feel happy about uh, uh not giving the guys that went home because you know we again we also feel that you know we sitting here we are very fortunate we are sitting with our families at, at times of uncertainty you want your comfort zone yeah you know so that that was a tough call and uh, you know we we probably regret that a little but uh, we you know fortunately again we had a lot of local most of our labor was local uh, so we didn't have too many people like that lovely uh, anything that uh, you feel as a decision was delayed uh, something something that you should have done early on it happened later or it's still in the pipeline that's something you need to do yeah you know i think from a business front uh, uh, our presence on ecom <laughs> is is was something that we did not do uh, much earlier and you know uh, during this whole phase uh, ecom just just uh, 
uh, you know, the sales just went over the roof and we weren't present. So uh, that's something we're still working on. But uh, yeah, that is something from a business front uh, that we probably missed out and yeah, need to work towards. Okay. Um, any experience that you're very proud of as a company, as an organization, um, anything you all did that you feel immensely proud of? Yeah, I think, you know, again, keeping the company healthy, uh, sticking to our value system, uh, you know, making sure that people around us are, are satisfied, are happy to work here. Uh, you know, we probably don't have the best process and systems like if, if, I, if I compare ourselves to MNCs. Uh, but you know we've we've got that blend uh, of of having family come professionals and making sure that the value system is is whether it's spelled out clearly or no at least it's there and everyone knows uh, it's there so uh, yeah I, I absolutely proud of proud of that uh, absolutely proud of the way our team took you know uh, took over and you know we we've, we've uh, at least the numbers we've posted uh, till quarter three have been have been uh, quite satisfactory. Uh, we can always do more. We're always hungry, but they were quite satisfactory coming from where we are. So I think, uh, you know, we feel very proud of the way everyone really stepped up uh, and That's wonderful. took control. That's wonderful. Um, Nikhil, traditionally, India is a work from office kind of an economy. Uh, we're used to seeing the people in person, being reported to in person. And now this whole culture of work from home came into um, the country very suddenly and uh, we've all gone into doing this but do you think this is a long-term solution for a country like us or for a company your particular company do you think this will work out in the long run you know I I, I look at it I, I think it, it should be a blend uh, of, of both uh, personally I, I would be happy to be in office for a few days uh, I also think, you know, the issue is um, uh, the space, right? When it comes to work from home, uh, yeah. not everybody has uh, uh, enough space. Um, you know, and a lot of people have kids and things like that. They need their space too. Unfortunately, they aren't going to school uh, also, right? So I think the space constraint, constraint is an issue, but we do believe that some functions or some back office uh, support functions can be moved to uh, work from home. Uh, but we believe there'll be a blend. So for example, we've made a work from home policy uh, and we've left it and, you know, it, this was not, not just now in this current way, but since wave one, we left it to the leaders uh, for their own function or their own businesses to make the decisions on who to come. So there are, there were some leaders who were very comfortable and, you know, the entire flow looked uh, uh, dark, uh, mm -hmm. right? So I think it will be a blend. Uh, there are times where you do need to meet physically, you need to socialize. Uh, we're a bit traditional in that terms, but uh, yeah, I think a blend would, would work uh, the best. But obviously when it comes to operations, you can't do any, any of that, but yeah. I actually miss sitting in the f office full of people and actually interacting. Somehow I feel there's a lot more idea generation, that sure. brainstorming experience and all of it is so much deeper. Uh, I, I am not a fan of this online interactions and uh, meetings. I feel this is actually more daunting in that sense. But yes, of course, it's a perspective. A uh, lot of people feel that some departments definitely can continue uh, work from home and others need to just come to work and get things done. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, so Nikhil, in any like government policies that I think, I know initially you did touch upon this, that the government did come up with a few policies that helped you uh, as an industry. Any specific worked in the favor or any suggestions that you have that, you know, a certain thing could be done or should be done and it might help your industry and the people in your industry? Well, I think, you know, uh, uh, the point I made earlier was that, you know, they allowed uh, us to make sure there was a vaccination drive. Uh, firstly, I, I, I personally believe that's only the only way out of this, this pandemic. And, uh, you know, so they allowed us to have a vaccination drive uh, within the company. And we made sure, you know, we could uh, vaccinate everyone about 45. Uh, you know, so I think that that really worked. Uh, besides that, I think, you know, what they've done is, uh, I think some of these things like the uh, real estate stamp duty, you know, it just fueled the sector, uh, the PLI schemes, uh, you know, I think that is something, and, you know, we, we have an LED business, so we're, you know, we could consider uh, 
taking part in some of those schemes because they've announced it for LEDs. So I think some of those things are uh, very much on the right track. Uh, for me, I think you know the the focus on is you know getting past this wave with the least uh, uh, fatalities. Uh, and you know whatever the government can do on vaccination uh, is a is a pressing issue right now. Uh, sure. But besides yeah. that, I think the focus on the economy um, is 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 the only way out uh, for us. Uh, like I said, because I think creating employment is is going to be our biggest challenge. True. Um, I know you said that things are looking good three and uh, you know the company is doing what it can to create more revenue work in their optimum space um how is 2021 looking for you specific policies decisions um ideas that you guys are implementing to make this year better than it's looking at this present moment for the rest of us yeah so you know i i think firstly you know I just uh, getting past this wave and, and uh, vaccinating enough people is important. Uh, you know, besides that, we've, uh, like I said, you know, we've uh, worked on this optimizing costs. Uh, we actually hired a, a, a strategy consultant uh, uh, to help us do that. And, uh, you know, we've been um, now in the, in the works of fi figuring out our um, five and 10 year strategy. Okay. Right. And, you know, so where do we want to take the company? What businesses do we want to get in? How do we make it leaner, uh, smarter? How do we make it more uh, tech enabled? And, and, you know, so we've been doing a lot of those things. And uh, we believe this whole long haul transformation journey it take us uh, five years or so. But, you know, I think that is what we've been focusing on. So as we, you know, first we squeezed out some costs and now, you know, we can deploy those costs in the right areas. Uh, and and focus on you know building the the what we call the version three of Polycal. Lovely, so, yeah. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> but in this entire uh, scheme of things, um, you guys didn't go through salary cuts and stuff. But uh, there's still that fear. Um, families getting affected with COVID. Uh, the overall morale around people is very low. You guys keep your employees motivated and keep their morale actually boosted and up? Yeah, uh, look, I mean, you know, we can, we can keep trying uh, and, and it's, it's hard, but we have to keep doing that. We didn't do uh, salary cuts and things like that, but uh, we've, we've been trying to engage, communicate as much as possible. Uh, we're also, you know, considering uh, to do, um, and you know, obviously, it's it's unfortunate. We don't want to reach that situation that if somebody um, uh, uh, is is deceased, uh, uh, you know, while working for the company, we we want to make sure that uh, we can support them, their family for a longer time, uh, make them eligible uh, and employable, you know, people in their family. Uh, so you know, to make sure that we have we give some sort of an income support and maybe some educational support and things like that. So we are working on. Uh, things like that. We are working on, you know, we deal with, we have a lot of dealers, distributors and retailers, um, you know, their, their shops are shut. Uh, if, if something happens in their family, we're trying to figure out how do we, uh, you know, make sure that we compensate them somehow to make sure again, you know, their, their families can get back on their feet. But it is very unfortunate. We don't want this to happen. We hope we never get to do this, but, uh, you know, we're keeping, uh, uh, we're, we're getting prepared. Electricians, you know, we deal with electricians uh, very closely. They're the ones who come and, you know, uh, uh, recommend our products in a lot of cases. We want to make sure that, uh, you know, we are trying to make sure that we have insurance, uh, uh, COVID insurance and things like that for them. Because for them, you know, these are daily wage earners, right? Every single day going for them becomes, becomes harder. So what can we do to sort of figure out that, you know, these guys uh, are also taking uh, care of. So we are, we are working on multiple policies that will be out soon. I, I think we're a little delayed, but you know, everyone just gets uh, taken aback with situations like this first, uh, but we're preparing and, and we'll be out with a lot of things to support our, our entire uh, stakeholder system of uh, these guys. That's really wonderful. Um, Nikhil, something like this actually 
about a lot of realizations. So apart from work, have there been any uh, personal realizations that you've had? Yeah, that we're extremely fortunate to be with our families. Uh, you know, uh, so we, we obviously should, you know, we, we've got the opportunity to spend more time with them. We should make the most of it. Uh, this pandemic has also, you know, given another realization to not just me, but to everyone probably, is that uh, uh, the, the, it, it doesn't differentiate uh, from the wealthy or, or no, right? It, 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 but it does differentiate to a good extent from the healthy uh, and the non-healthy relatively, right? And I think therefore, uh, uh, I, I think three times a day, uh, three times a week workout is just not good enough. We need to get to <laughs> five times. I've been doing that. Lovely. Uh, so yeah that is really wonderful a uh, great takeaway at the end to definitely stay healthy and be mindful of our health versus everything else because that's really something that can take us forward and uh, really take us into a better future uh, thank you Nikhil for having this conversation with me today uh, thank you everybody here who viewing it um, I have definitely taken away a few very important elements from this conversation, especially the importance Polycab and Nikhil uh, put on stakeholders, their welfare. Uh, I have actually interviewed him throughout with goosebumps all over my skin because uh, I feel this had so much human value in it. It was not only just about the business, but really just about the people who actually build that business. Um, and such lovely strategies from optimizing costs to making things happen, even small considerations like bringing the stakeholders back into the office, the sales team and figuring out new ways that they can actually generate um, revenue and do their work. I had a lot of takeaways from this conversation. Thank you, Nikhil, for being so candid and sharing everything so openly. Thank you. Thank you, Ruchira. Thank you for having me here. I must say, you know, um, my your your questions uh, sort of makes me think of what more can we do right what what else can we do and uh, you know we will put in some more thought thank you you've been very kind uh, 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 to me and and to the organization and very happy to be part of this hopefully uh, there's some value i i uh, created I'm sure you will. There's, there was a lot for everyone to actually take home from here. So guys, this conversation is um, going to be up on all my handles. Uh, follow me on Ruchira Darda. Uh, and uh, there will be more conversations with leaders like Nikhil himself. And I hope you do find value when there is something that you can implement immediately and make your work and business in your organization a healthier, happier space. While we all go through this, we are in this together. And uh, I'm taking home the one thing that Nikhil said that um, we are responsible for creating employment. And that's a chain reaction that goes into education, the family health, family happiness. So let us all be those people that actually trickle down happiness into other people's lives. I'll see you soon with the next conversation. Thank you for joining today. Thanks. Bye-bye.